also goes back to the point about him at least giving two years to the Jets. Now, nobody thought he was going to get hurt. And you remember he all, all was talking about, you know, you know, I, I made a commitment to them, and, you know, we'll see how this year goes. Assuming that if they had won to the Super Bowl, maybe, just maybe, then he would have retired. But, um, yeah, I don't think he's going to want to go out this way. And, you know, the way that surgery goes nowadays, uh, it's it's so much better than it was when Vinny Tesfari had his Achilles done, so much better than when Dan Marino has his had his Achilles done. And all you have to do is look at Kevin, uh, Kevin Durant because Kevin Durant looks like he never had an injury. Yes, that's right. And he did have that same injury, major injury, and did take a year off but then came back and was at a high level. So I wonder... You know, when is Aaron Rodgers having that surgery and is he going to be around? I mean, that's going to be we're talking about Zach Wilson and his maturity. And a big part of that is Aaron Rodgers being there during training camp. And I think him being around is important for Zach Wilson and the Jets morale as a whole. So I wonder, you know, when are we going to see him? Well, I don't know when we're going to see him, but I do believe he either had surgery yesterday or he'll have it today. And Dr. Neil Elitraj will probably do the surgery. He's worked on him before with other injuries. He's a orthopedic surgeon uh, out in Los Angeles. Okay. And I would think that's where he's going to go. But it's probably, it's probably the doctor he feels most comfortable with. And then convalescing uh, afterwards, I would think he'd be at his home in Malibu. Now, how long he's there before he comes back here, that's anybody's guess. And I guess that's really going to be about uh, what the doctor tells him, where he can go, can he stand, you know, all those different things that go into it. So we may not see Aaron Rodgers here for quite some time. Uh, he may, you know, have to go through this process over the next five to six weeks, at least, I would think, uh, before he's going to get on an airplane and come back here. So I, 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 I don't know. I, it was either yesterday or today, and it's going to be out in L.A., and it's going to be Dr. Neil Elitraj. And, and then the, the determining factor of when and if he comes back this year will be you know, how what they advise him and what they prescribe him to do and how, you know, they he's got to go through this process. The one thing, you know, about Kevin Durant, remember, he got hurt in the playoffs. Yep. And that's one of the reasons why he missed the next year. Uh, I mean, this is game one. Uh, so you're thinking that by next August, that would almost be 12 months. And that would be well within the range of him being able to come back and play. Yeah, and also I was uh, listening to Jerry and Al, the warm-up show, and Jerry said he heard an interview with Dan Marino, and Dan Marino said that he this is not his plant foot, which is something that, that we hadn't really discussed, and I think that's an important point, the fact that this is not the foot that he's going to be you know, dropping back, planting, and, and throwing off of, uh, which is a positive if you're looking for a silver lining. But I do think it's important that his presence is around, and I'm sure the Jets said, listen, do what you got to do. Go out there. Use the doctor you want to use. You've got carte blanche. We don't care. We know you're going to do the right thing. And Aaron probably wants to get away from it. If you looked at his Instagram post, it seemed very emotional. I wouldn't be surprised if he was out there in Malibu trying to clear his head and get over all of this. But at some point... He should be back. Yeah, depending on what the doctors tell him to do. You got to remember, as much as he would love to be back with his teammates, I'm sure he'd like to be involved. But, you know, at, at this point, going to L.A. and getting the surgery done, I, I don't suspect that he's going to be on a plane back here immediately. I just don't I don't see that. I just and again, I'm, I'm just speculating. I, I just think that, you know, the convalescing over the next five to six weeks at his home in Malibu would probably be the thing that would be the best situation for him. Plus he's got to go see the doctor and make sure that the surgery is clean, that there's no after effects from the surgery. And, you know, there's all sorts of things that could happen. So um, really what you got to hope for is that, you know, that he gets on the road to recovery. Uh, he goes through the rehab process and then is ready to, you know, go, uh, you know, get going uh, for next year. And like I said, he's well within the, the range of being ready to go next year, nine to 12 months, they say, um, you know, he's had other injuries he's come back from, and I would, sus I would suspect that he'll come back from this. And like I said, he, 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 he basically said during hard, hard knocks or around hard knocks and interviews after interviews that, you know, he committed to the Jets for at least two years. Yeah, so that means that uh, he should be playing next year as long as he say, say, uh, stays in this same mentality, uh, which is that he's going to rehab and come back and play, and that's what it sounded like from the Instagram post. Now, the thing that the Jets have to keep an eye on and their fans need to keep an eye on is who could 
be available later in the season, not so much now, if things aren't exactly going their way. Because Zach Wilson could be okay. Maybe he's better than all of us expect. Or maybe he's horrendous. And I don't think that the Jets, if Zach Wilson is bad, are going to just sit there, sitting on their hands, saying, woe is us. This is not the group that is going to be doing that. Not now they're not, especially no. after three years of building to get exactly. to this Exactly. So they're not going to let this thing just go right down the toilet because of the quarterback. And as we know, they've got two guys on the roster as it sits here right now, Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle. And chances are both of those guys are not going to take this team to the promised land. So let's say Zach keeps them on track. They're right there, maybe a little bit worse than what we expected because obviously there's a huge drop-off between Zach Wilson and Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers to Zach Wilson. We get around the trade deadline. And a team that's playing tonight, let's just say, is having a miserable season. They're probably going to be 0-2 after tonight. They can't win in Philadelphia, although Philadelphia is banged up and their defense did not look great against New England. I guess there's a shot uh, that the Vikings could win, but they got killed there last year. They always get killed in Philadelphia. It's a terrible spot for them. They're a touchdown underdog, and they could start out the season 0-2 having lost to the Buccaneers and then having lost to the Eagles if they lose tonight, and their schedule is very, very difficult. What happens around the trade deadline when Kirk Cousins, who's on an expiring contract, is on a team that's one in six? I, I think his dead cap number is about forty million, though. So that you would have to, the Vikings would have to say, okay, we'll eat that, we'll move on from him, we'll we'll get a second round draft choice or whatever. If in fact that was even possibility for the Jets to fit him in their salary cap, they could they can move money around. Everybody can do different things. His base salary is only like ten million this right, year. Right, right. So it's it's really about the dead cap number and whether or not. Uh, the Vikings can absorb that. Yeah, and I wonder, too, at the, at the trade deadline, if it's the same as if he was traded in the offseason. And that's something that I'm trying to find the answer to, was trying to find. But the nuances of the salary cap are very difficult to find on the Internet because only really general managers know this stuff. So I wonder if he was traded before the season started. Yes, that dead cap number triggers in but if it's at the trade deadline is it the same amount of money what happens it is expiring contract there's a lot of factors but also another factor is he's got a full no trade clause yeah i'm uh i'm i'm i would be lukewarm on him not not for any playing reason just for all the things you're talking about dead cap money no trade clause uh, you know, it's still only week two in the season. They may get off to an 0-2 start. Remember, the Bengals got to an, off to an 0-2 start last year. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things that can be going on here. And I'm sure Joe Douglas is going through his litany of players and just looking at everybody and then talking to his offense coordinator, trying to figure out, you know, which player would be the most apt to be able to step in and know the the vocabulary, the system, and understand, you know, what they're um, you know, what, what is what their responsibilities are. You know, people don't understand, like, being a quarterback at the NFL, it's an enormous job. It, it's just a norm. I mean, like, everything that goes into being a successful quarterback, you can't just pluck a guy off the yeah. street and plug him in. I understand. Say, go take them to the Super Bowl. Go take them to the playoffs. It, does, it doesn't work that way. It's it, There's so much that goes into it. So I, the, the way I look at it, it would have to be somebody somewhere along the line it has a tie to this type of offense, this type of vocabulary. If in fact Zach falls flat on his face, that that's you know that's the fallback position. They could get somebody in here, like a Colt McCoy or somebody that's not going to excite anybody, but could actually get a snap off and call a play, and probably be able to run twenty plays or so off his wristband and know without checking at the line of scrimmage. You know everything that Aaron Rodgers was capable of doing at the line of scrimmage is now basically out the window. That part of it is out the window. And the thing that really distresses me, and, you know, this, this report came after, you know, I was questioning why Aaron Rodgers didn't throw the ball quickly when he has his tackles trying to do cut blocks. And then, of course, and maybe this is what pisses people off up in Green Bay. I don't know. Then, of course, a report comes out. So, you know, Aaron doesn't like that because he likes to extend plays. Well, you know, I don't want Aaron. I don't want uh, you know Zach Wilson thinking that way. I want Zach Wilson knowing what the guys are doing on particular plays that are being called. So if those call those plays are being called, 
and the tackles are taught to dive at the ankles or knees of the defensive ends to get their hands down so the ball doesn't get batted in those situations. I want Zach making a decision and throwing it. I don't want him extending plays. Yeah. That, that's where he gets in trouble. And and back to the first part of what you were just saying, though, about plucking a quarterback and, and how tough that is. I think we learned in the quarterback documentary how hard playing the position is. But another, but another thing we learned is how much work Kirk Cousins puts in. And he is a guy you don't have to worry about. Let's just say, just for hypothetically speaking, that – the Jets, uh, it's a desperation heave ho to try to get a competent person in at the trade deadline because Zach's not getting it done. Tim Boyle's not getting it done. They just need to do something because the team is great everywhere else. The Vikings are giving up. They were going to move on from Kirk Cousins at the end of the year anyway, and uh, they want to keep Justin Jefferson happy, so they give him a contract, and now there's a chance that Kirk Cousins comes here. He would work his ass off to learn that offense more than just about anybody in the league. And I know that for a fact because I watched him learn a new offense with Kevin O'Connell last year on the quarterback documentary where he's sitting in his hotel room by himself with index cards writing the plays over yes. and over and over and over again. That's right. So if there's one guy that could take on that tremendous responsibility – and he's 35 years old. He's been in the league for a long time now. He's got a bunch of different coordinators, a bunch of experience. He'll put everything into and, and it. And I'm sure that Kevin O'Connell, because he comes from this group of young coaches that yeah. are coaching now, that are offensive coaches in mind. Yeah. I'm sure that there are similarities in his offense and that Nathaniel Hackett's offense. So, yeah, I mean, I could see that. I could see that. But I also know that would be a Band-Aid. Uh, that would be however long he would be here if, in fact, they did trade for him. That would just be a Band-Aid. Well, yeah, right, but it would it would be a Band-Aid that could maybe, maybe get you to where you wanted to go with Aaron Rodgers. Now, Kirk Cousins is not Aaron Rodgers. I understand, but he's a hell of a lot better than Zach Wilson. So, And this team is really, really good. They got a ton of weapons. They got a great defense. This is the type of team that Kirk Cousins could get to the next level with. Like, he's had some good teams. He's never had a great team around him. So anybody who says, oh, he can't win a big game, he can't do this, oh, he can't well, do that. You, you say that. Right. That's all true. <laughs> yeah. It's all true. Right, okay. But with he's never had. Oh, so he's got a Dalvin Cook back here. He's right. He's never had a defense like this. Right. And he's he's had weapons like this, but he's never played with a defense like this. All right. So that could that I'm sure that could be a possibility depending on the salary cap end and the dead cap end on the other side of the Minnesota Vikings ledger. Yeah. And whether or not the other question is, is whether or not he wants to leave Minnesota and come to New York. Yeah. Well, I think if he if the GM says to him, we're not going to bring you back next year. Our season is over. You're basically going to be playing out the string here. We want Caleb Williams. Yes, and we're going to try to we're going to try to tank to get Caleb Williams, which would be the greatest thing in the world. And finally, maybe the Vikings get that great quarterback. But I, I would say, if I'm Kirk Cousins, hell yeah, I'm going to try to make a run for a Super Bowl. I mean, if the Jets are sitting there and having a good season, and Zach Wilson's holding them back, I mean, why would you not waive your no trade clause to go to that? that type of deal where you could maybe find yourself in Las okay. Vegas. All right, that, a possibility, but not not in the immediate future. No, the immediate, I mean, it just everybody understands in the immediate future. They're no giving matter, Zach the chance. You could throw every name out there that you want. Here's a guy that has been through this entire training camp. Here's a guy that was a former number two overall pick. Here's a guy that is basically a, a reclamation project right now. And they're going to get, and I know for a fact that the, you know, that the general manager does like the young man. He does like the young man, but I don't think he's sold that, you know, he's going to take them to the promised land. What is amazing to me uh, in through all of this is that part of this whole big Aaron Rodgers picture was the reclamation of Zach Wilson. It's now sped up to a point where he's going to be the guy that's going to be asked to do it. And I mean, believe me, he has taken his slings and arrows. I, more people are dumping on this kid. And uh, I'm just, you know, I'm, I want to give him a chance. And, you know, of all teams to go against in his first start back has to be one of the best teams when it comes to pass rushing. Yeah, the Cowboys. Holy God. I, I mean, I watched this tape yesterday. These guys, they mauled 
the Giants. Oh, yeah. And everybody who was at that game and watched that game on Sunday night, um, the Giants' offensive line didn't have a chance. I mean, think about the Cowboys' home opener after beating the Giants 40 to nothing. That building when Zach Wilson goes out there on that first drive with the most fans that they could pack into an NFL stadium. It's going to be insanity. I mean, well, I, I mean, I, this I, is what you play for, man. This I is, have Zach's back. <laughs> we'll this see. is what you play for. I this just is can't what wait you for want. everybody to do a 180 on that. Oh, everybody would love Zach now, and I, he's going to be fine. And it, wait a minute, not everybody loves Zach. Oh, but I don't know what you're hearing. Oh, Zach. All these Jet fans, like like BT and Joe Beningo, and all the people calling here, give him a chance. He's going to be so much better. It's a year into it. Blah, blah, blah. We are unkillable we'll see i mean what is it with the screaming and yelling going on around here Al? i mean there's been a lot of screaming and yelling yeah even yesterday i saw tommy lugauer and evan screaming at each other right uh, I, it we had off. sal screaming the other day sal screaming well, sal was screaming yesterday right et screaming sean marash screaming a lot of screaming man. a lot of screaming going on around here i mean like, what is it with these people <laughs> Just like Zach Wilson, these guys are getting their shot, right? They're getting their opportunity. Stop walking around work like a loser. So, <laughs> you know, they're going all full bore, man, and not leaving anything out there. I mean, it all on these the guys are like insane. I did not hear the Marash uh, scream. What was he Stop screaming about? Who's fighting the Cowboys like fan? On oh. the phone, a caller. Oh, okay. Right I got to watch the Lou Gower Evan one. Did you see that one? I did not see that. I got to watch that in a break. I'm curious to see that. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified when we're dropping new content.